Hello and welcome to the Mindful Men Podcast, a show inspiring men to be mindful about their lives. Each week, we'll dive into a range of topics that matter to men and hear from everyday people doing extraordinary things. So if you love the show, please give it a five-star rating and share it with your mates. Now, before we get into this week's episode, please note that some of the content may trigger you. And if this happens, please reach out to your support networks. It's really important. If you can't get enough of Mindful Men, head over to our website. It's www.mindful-men.com.au. Find the show notes and the links to our socials there. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's get mindful. G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Mindful Men podcast. I'm your host Simon Rinney and today I'm getting mindful about community and how engaging with a community can help us to connect, be happy and grow. Now when I was putting this episode together, I was reflecting on some recent feedback that I've had on either this podcast or podcasts that I've been a guest on and it made me really happy to see this feedback and get this feedback. So I wanted to share that with you today to stick around and you might find out if you feature on the Mindful Men podcast. But in developing it, I also got thinking about some of the other positive impacts of different aspects of community that I'm either creating or engaging with, which are both helping me to connect in with other people, to be happier and to grow. And when I say grow, I mean growing in confidence, business networks, and improving my mental health. So really excited to share some of that with you today. But I'm going to start with a bit of an update because some of this content in today's episode talks about my sobriety. And in fact, the feedback is around some of the episodes I've been on in relation to me giving up the grog. So a quick beer-free update. So I'm recording this on the 23rd of March, 2024, and I know Sam, my editor, loves a good timestamp. So there you go, Sam. And today is 216 days without a beer, or a little over seven months. This is amazing. Like I set myself this goal last year to go from August to the end of the year without any alcohol, and I didn't know how I was going to go, but I was pretty committed. But I didn't know how I was going to go this year. I know I set the goal for being alcohol-free for the whole year, and I was wondering how that was going to go. And more recently, I've had a lot of stress events. So we've recently sold our house. We've moved into a temporary place, a temporary accommodation, and I've been feeling a lot of stress and anxiety while we wait to try and find a new home. And even I've had thoughts this week of just wanting to grab a beer and just take away some of this anxiety and stress. But I keep reflecting on my journey and and my purpose as to why I'm not drinking and that's just enough to not go and get the grog and stay away from it. So I'm really happy that I've got a very, I guess, committed mindset on staying sober. And a lot of that's driven by feedback that I'm getting from you, which I'm going to touch on today. So yeah, it's really cool to be almost oh, just a little over seven months alcohol free. And I guess some positive changes is that I've got a little bit less brain fog than I used to have. And I say a little bit less because I, as someone who lives with anxiety and depression, I often have a little bit of brain fog. It comes and goes, but it's a lot less than I had when I was drinking alcohol. So I'm really happy about that. I am able to think a bit clearer these days and more frequently as well. So I've also got more energy and particularly on the weekends when I would drink. So I used to drink on weekends primarily and and also sometimes during the week. And I would never get hangovers, but the next day I would wake up and I just feel groggy or, or just lethargic in the gut and in the mind, in the body as well. But without alcohol, like I feel a lot more energized. I I get up in the mornings, I'm ready to go. I get to the end of the evening and I'm not feeling like all woozy when I'm going to bed because I've had a few. And so this is just really good physical and mental feelings as well. But the biggest one that I've, I've come across, and this was a big one because when I used to drink, I used to say to people who, who weren't drinking, oh, what's going on? Just have one, just have one or just have two. It's okay. And I think it wasn't so much that I wanted them to drink. It was because I wanted them to drink with me to make me feel better about my drinking. And so when I got sober, one of the the trickiest things for me to get around in my head was what are other people going to say about my drinking or not drinking, should I say? And in the early days, a few people would ask me, oh, Simon, do you want a beer or or whatever if we're at a family thing or or going out somewhere? And I'd say no. I'd politely say no. And that brought up a bit of anxiety and stress for me because I didn't want to let them down or didn't want to appear to be this sober dude. But in fact, I've since flip that and go, you know what? I love being the sober dude. 
and I don't need a drink. And so the more and more I engage with these kind of events, the more and more people don't ask me for a drink. And it's great because I think they know that I'm not drinking and it just makes me feel so much more comfortable. And so, yeah, I'm really liking that nobody's giving me a beer and people actually accept that I'm sober now. And it's great. And I actually have a bit of pride when I go to something and I get asked for a beer or whatever. I say, no, I'm sober or I'm clean or I'm having a period away from the alcohol. And I know in my mind, it's probably a long period. It's probably a forever period, but these are just the words that come out. And so that's what I use. So yeah, the quick update there, just a little over seven months. So woohoo, go me. Um, but before I get into feedback as well on on the podcast that I'm receiving and including you know my sobriety as well, I wanted to touch on some positive things about engaging community. And this is really important. And I've even done episodes on it before. So episode 87, for example, and episode, I think, 100 on how to be a mindful man talks around the importance of community. And for a long time, I didn't engage with community. I was on autopilot and I just liked doing my own things. I liked being in my little box. I'd go to work and I'd come home and that was it. And I'd live at home and I wouldn't do much outside of my comfort zone. In fact, I wouldn't do anything outside of my comfort zone. Every now and then I might join a gym or or something like that. And I feel like I'm engaging with community, but I was really still going those places and not engaging. So still keeping to myself. And with that came a sense of loneliness. And that loneliness I did touch on in those other episodes where I talked about men feeling lonely as well. And they say that men's loneliness or loneliness more broadly is like almost like the next epidemic since COVID. And COVID really highlighted the importance of connection. So towards the end of last year, after I'd started being sober, I actually started to feel this real burning desire to to break free from that sense of loneliness and start connecting. And so since the end of last year and the start of this year, that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to create community for myself. I think for a long time, I've expected the community to come to me and I've moved around a lot. I grew up in Adelaide. I've lived in Canberra. I lived in Hobart, Brisbane, now the Sunshine Coast. And each move, I kind of hoped that community would gravitate towards me, much like it did at school. Like, you know, when I went to school, I was a very fast kid. And that's how I developed friendships. I was very good at sport. And that's how I developed friendships. It's a bit of a larrikin. And that's how I developed friendships. But as you turn into an adult, it becomes a lot more harder for people to see those traits in you and want to be your friend. And so I think that's why I kind of went onto autopilot and came into this more of an introverted lifestyle as opposed to a more of an extroverted lifestyle in school. And that got me down. And so this last year or so, I've been really putting myself out there as much as I can, as, as uncomfortable as that is for me because I am a bit shy and introverted. And one example is I started a men's surf crew. So around, oh, I think it was June, July, August last year, I started learning to surf and I did that through Waves of Wellness, which is a, a, a mental health inspired surf, learn to surf class and that's around Australia actually so you can just check out Waves of Wellness online and you might be able to find a local Waves of Wellness for you and I loved it. It was I think six weeks of me and some other guys and there's a few girls there as well getting together up at Noosa so a beautiful place to learn to surf and talking about mental health and mindfulness and then learning to surf as well and I had a lot of energy from this and I wanted that to keep going and one of the things that I guess I was disappointed from that was that there was no after group so we finished the group and it was really left on us to continue and the introverted man the shy person in me didn't want to do that didn't want to create community I just wanted to go to somebody else's community but it didn't happen and so I got this idea to create community so I actually sat down with one of the um, facilitators of the ways of wellness who's also a part of my business network and now a good mate and I said oh I'd like to maybe we should create something here for guys to keep connecting in keep learning to surf keep being on the waves talking about men's mental health mindfulness and maybe we can tie it in with having a coffee afterwards and and so we created this group me and my mate and we called it Boards, Blokes and Brews. And we catch up every, I think, Wednesday morning down at Attic Surf Club here on the Sunshine Coast and rain, hail or shine. We're out there. If it's too rough, we might just go for a bit of a swim or a walk or just grab a coffee. As long as we're connecting, we just keep showing up for each other. And since we've created it, we've had guys drop in and out over the over the period and having a lot of fun, having a bit of banter with each other, helping each other grow. So I am the um, beginner in the group, pretty much. There's a few other beginners that come in and out as well. But every time I do something like a turn on the board or I recently got my new board, so they're all cheering me on and it's absolutely fantastic and I love it. So if you're listening to this and that sounds really cool, 
I'm going to ins- extend that community to you. So if you're on the Sunshine Coast and you're keen to join us, it is every Wednesday morning, very early. So it's before work or before uni or whatever you do during your day. Hit me up, send me a DM or, or an email or something like that. I'm going to give my email at the end of today's episode and join us. It's free. The only thing you need to is have a board and be relatively comfortable in the water. It's not lessons or anything like that. So you need to be able to... Yeah, jump in and, and have some fun by yourself but we just do it together we we love party waves so if you're surfing next to me i wouldn't care if you dropped in and and likewise most of the other guys are out the back doing some pretty cool stuff but i'm in the shallows but you can go wherever if you're experienced as well you can go hang out at the back with some of the other blokes as well they all have a lot of fun and we all connect via whatsapp as well so yeah send me an email or, or message me somehow and i'll give you the details if you're interested to join boards blokes and bruce another one i wanted to talk about is soccer so i love soccer i love uh, aussie rules football as well so i like football and football depending on which definition you call it football or soccer and last year my son started soccer which was really cool so he was six last year and he started his very first soccer games and he loved it and i loved watching him and just being near some of the other parents and cheering our kids on it was really a lot of fun and even last year i got an opportunity to take a few training sessions or help out with the manager if they weren't there to do subs on the weekend and i got a lot of energy from this and I felt connected, which was really important for me because I'm very shy. And so I'm one of those dads who will sit with the parents, but not really say much. I'd sit on the edge. I would say hello, but I would not generally initiate conversation unless it's someone that I feel really super comfortable with. But I really loved it. And I was a bit sad when the the season ended because that sense of community disappeared. And we waited over the summer. And then when this season came along, so my son's now seven, I actually felt like putting my hand up and saying, I'm happy to coach or or be a manager as well. And so me and another dad, we picked up the reins and, and we're sharing the duties this year. And I'm loving it. Like I feel even more part of that community now because I've got, I guess, as a focal point, as a manager or slash coach, other parents gravitate towards me and say, how are you going? And they talk about soccer or we talk about the games or training and it's really nice. But also to watch and support these boys to learn how to kick and throw in and be goalie and have fun. You know, I felt a little bit bad last week because it was a bit muddy. So we had them pretending they were goalies and sliding all over the grass and, and the mud and stuff like that. But to, to do that is so much fun. And it gives me so much more energy and I'm just loving that. And it feels nice to be part of a a community through, say, a sports club. My daughter's about to start dance. And so that's going to be interesting being a dance dad and, and supporting her through that. But I'm looking forward to engaging through that community as well when I get the opportunity. And from a business perspective, I'm always networking. So Uh, My accountant and bookkeeper will always see coffee or banana bread in my expenses because I'm always sitting down with people at cafes and networking, whether it's for referrals to come into my business. So Mindful Men is a therapy business as well. It's not just a podcast or if it's for people to do collaborations. So this past week, I met someone to potentially come onto the podcast and, and sat down with them to talk about the podcast and what they can bring to this very community. Or it could be around just other men wanting to to touch base and engage. I've been to a few men's retreats. So every now and then I'll, I'll touch base with someone from there and catch up with them for coffee or breakfast or just a walk or whatever and talk and engage. And these things are helping me grow both my confidence, my happiness, my sense of connection. And it's really cool thing. And one of the things I've, I've learned is sometimes particularly if we've moved around like I have and we're not from the place where we grew up, it's very hard to to get in on some of these clicks that already exist with guys or even girls in your new location. I found this particularly in the workplace. So, you know, meet people in the workplace. It's probably the most logical people that, or place, should I say, where people meet as adults and, you know, inviting people out for Friday night drinks or, or the Christmas party or the mid-year party or whatever it is. Often I found, particularly on the Sunshine Coast and and maybe to in Hobart as well when I lived there, and in Brisbane certainly, is that people who live in and have grown up in those areas, they might go to these things, but then they're very quick to go home and not go on. And I think part of that was the party guy in me, like the, the drinker in me. I, I wanted to keep it going because I, I like to drink, but also I like that feeling of obliterating my anxiety and OCD with the drink, but also connecting in with other people through alcohol. These days without alcohol, I'm actually preferring to do these daytime things such as the surfing thing or the soccer thing or the networking thing as well. So I'm finding a different way to do that 
but I'm still finding that there are clicks around. But by creating community such as the Surf Crew or creating community through my business, so business networks and professional networks, which also turn into personal networks as well. Some of those business and, and podcasts and professional networks, I've now got, I would say, friends that I engage with, some of which are in the surf crew. And so it's really nice. Sometimes we have to create that for ourselves. And it can be really hard to create it if we don't have ideas. And so a few years ago, one of those ideas was the Mindful Men podcast to create a sense of community, to create a community for you out there, to listen in, to get some inspiration about what's going on in your life and maybe take some steps to heal or grow or develop or connect in whatever way is meaningful for you. And last year, I also started the Mindful Men Facebook community group to do that very thing, to connect guys from all over the world, to help them develop understanding of what mindful living is. And from there, get inspired to do something different to grow, to heal, to get into therapy, to do a men's retreat, to make a new friend. And so I invite you in if you're listening to this and you're still looking for your sense of community, your tribe, join us in the Mindful Men Facebook community. It's free. We do regular posts. I am looking to set up some an online Zoom catch up as well in there and eventually some in-person stuff. Um, and I guess the timestamp from today's episode, so the 23rd of March, 2024, might put that into context. You might join in a few months and all these things Things might already be up and running, but that's okay. Come and join us. The more, the merrier. We can grow this into a global community of men being mindful about who they are and what they want to do with their lives. So that's a bit about where I'm getting energy from community. And I think some of the positive things that I'm seeing in community and even with my drinking as well, it's people that are touching base with me and we're about to hear some of the feedback and that helps spur me on a little bit longer and keep going and doing this for myself, my family, but also for you out there. And hopefully you listening to my voice and hearing my journey inspires you to keep going on your journeys as well. So let's get into some feedback. And this is the really exciting part of the episode. I've got a fair bit today. I've had a bit of a flurry, which is interesting because I've been doing this for over two years now. I think we're in the hundreds of episodes. But in the initial days of podcasting, podcasting is a very lonely space. And I've spoken about this on a few occasions is that it is me in a room talking to my computer. (laughs) <laughs> and talking to this camera right in front of me, which goes out to things like YouTube and it goes out to TikTok and it goes out to Apple or Spotify or wherever you're listening. And sometimes there's a guest on the other side of that camera and it's good. We could have a really fantastic conversation. But then at the end of the episode, you click stop or close and that person disappears or me looking at myself disappears and you don't hear anything. But I know you're out there because I see the subscribers going up. So on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and YouTube, where I focus my majority of my analytics, I do see that number creeping up and creeping up, which is fantastic. I think in Spotify, we've hit over 200 subscribers in March 2024. On Apple, we've got another 100 or so as well. YouTube's going really well. We've got something like 7,000 or so subscribers. And even on TikTok, that's growing slowly as well. Nothing's really gone viral. A A couple of YouTube videos have gone pretty well and I'm really excited for that. But largely it is it is quite a lonely space and, and a lot of podcasters will tell you that as well. So when we do get feedback, it is absolutely amazing to get that feedback. And for some reason over the last month or two, I've got a bit of a flurry. So I'm going to share that with you today and hopefully yeah, give you a shout out if you've left your name on the feedback as well, because some of it does come through anonymous. So I'm going to start with some feedback that I've received from me guesting on some other people's podcasts. And I had a great chat with Yesim from Yes Career Coaching a little while ago around changing career pathways and also using your pain for purpose. And so that's what I've largely done in Mindful Men is turn my mental health story into a therapy business for men, dedicated to men to help them grow and break out of the shackles of men's mental illness. And so I recently received this feedback from Yesim. She had a message sent directly to her. And in the episode that she shared with myself, one of her listeners, T. Hales, 2014, said, I loved it. It is authentic and genuine and covers topics that are very useful and current from quite a large spectrum of mental health issues for men. And this is very inspiring. So thanks again, Yesim and Simon. Now, another bit of feedback that I've received was via my episode on how I quit alcohol. And there's actually two here. One I'm going to share in this part and another one I'm going to share right at the end. 
But this first one was from Danny. So Danny is the host of How I Quit Alcohol. And after I started talking about my alcohol journey on this podcast, I started to reach out to a few other podcasts around alcohol and being sober. And I was so grateful that Danny brought me on to her show. She's got quite a large show and a large following. So I was really excited to get on her show. And she tagged me in on a message that she got and that she put on her Instagram and I absolutely loved it because it's not just around alcohol but it's also around my my journey with OCD. And so the the feedback starts off with this person sharing to Danny how much they love her podcast and it is a great podcast so it's, highly recommend you go over there, particularly if you're struggling with alcohol, because there's a lot of great guests that go on there that talk about their journey. And I was just fortunate to be one of those. And the feedback then goes into, I was just wanted to send you a message and say, thank you so much for using your platform to facilitate such a healthy conversation with Simon about OCD. It's so damn liberating to hear someone explain it so accurately, as it's such a misunderstood and incredibly crippling disorder. I've personally struggled with OCD for many years, and I'm one of the lucky ones to have recovered from it for over four years, only after finding content online that educated me on OCD and ERP. It honestly saved my life, and I believe that your recent podcast episode could do the same for others. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. This really struck a chord with me because, A, I just loved hearing the feedback about my journey with alcohol, but also my journey with OCD. I love, 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 love talking about OCD because it is so misunderstood. Just like this person says, it is so trivialized. Often people say, I'm a little bit OCD. And in fact, recently I've had people say, oh yeah, I've had OCD. But when I go into their themes or anything like that, they go, I'm not clinically diagnosed. And I'm like, okay, so you don't have OCD. And, and so for someone with OCD, for, for people around to joke around it, to say it's just about being neat and tidy or washing your hands or whatever, it is so much more than that. And I've spoken about OCD in different episodes. So check them out. I mean, one of the initial episodes was on my life with OCD. So go right back to the start of the podcast if you haven't heard that and, and hear some of that story. And I also did a great one on OCD with Taylor Newendorp right at the start. He was one of the very first guests to come on. He's an OCD therapist over in Chicago, which was an amazing episode. But with this feedback, I can certainly attest to the power of social media and say podcasting to support us to grow. In fact, even though I was diagnosed in 2012 with OCD, none of my therapists treated the OCD. And it wasn't until I started Mindful Men Instagram page following my burnout in 2020 that I discovered an OCD community. And like, for some reason, it just like, I, I don't know, our phone seemed to listen to us and it just popped in some OCD people. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know other people had OCD. I've been diagnosed. I've never heard anyone talk about it, except for trivializing it. And so I started connecting with these people. And just like this person on this feedback with Danny, I discovered this thing called ERP, and that's exposure response prevention. So that's a therapy tool or, or framework for treating OCD, much like we often hear about cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, ERP is targeted at OCD. And so it was really cool. I can really attest to this person's journey of engaging with something like a podcast, hearing other people talk about OCD and ERP because it was so similar to me. So I thank this person for sharing and hopefully, yes, it does save somebody else's life because that's why I do what I do. That's why I share these stories to inspire you, but sometimes also save you if you need saving. So the next bit of feedback comes from a new friend. I like to call Ali a friend. So Ali Flynn is the host of the Challenges That Changes podcast. And I was fortunate enough to be a guest on her show and talking about men's mental health and alcohol and sobriety, but also had Ali come on and share her story about living with a stroke and the impact that that had on her life, including being a, a parent and, and a business owner as well. So make sure you check out that episode and also check out Ali's show as well and give it a five-star rating. It is a fantastic show. I love listening to Ali's work and the guests that she has. But shortly after that, we had my episode with her. Ali said that she got a bit of feedback from a few people in her community and people that would come up to her on the street and say, oh, that episode with Simon was really good. Thanks so much for sharing. And in particular, this one stood out for me. She messaged me this, I think, through Instagram, and it was just a screenshot of some feedback she got from one of her community members. And it basically said that a lady got in contact with her during the week and told her that she gave up alcohol after listening to my episode on the challenges that change us podcast and that's after 28 years of drinking now how cool is that 
to share my story of alcohol and to inspire someone else to just give it up. It's just a fantastic thing. This is why we do podcasting. This is why we hope to inspire, you know, why we share stories with the hope to inspire other people to make positive changes in their life. So, Ali, thanks so much for sharing me that feedback with me. I really did appreciate it coming through. And again, it just gave me, gave me this jolt of energy to continue my journey of sobriety, but also continue my journey of sharing stories with the world. The next bit of feedback I got from Instagram, actually, and it was from Dave Clark, 665. So, Dave, how are you going, mate? And this was in relation to, I think, one of the posts I did on what it means to be a mindful man. And I mentioned the Facebook community that we've got, the Mindful Men Facebook community. And in there, whenever you're invited into there and, and you get a welcome post, I, I prompt you with a question, what does it mean to be a mindful man? And I get so much great insight from the guys about what it means to be mindful for them. And this was in, in relation to actually an Instagram post post where I shared one of those posts, but Dave said he's loving the podcast and it's life-changing and thanks. It's a short bit of feedback that again lit me up. To know that the podcast and the content that we're putting out there through Mindful Men is life-changing, that's why I do what I do. And for a long time when in the podcasting space, but also social media, you wonder, are the right people hearing this story or seeing this post? Again, as I said, it can be a lonely space. We scroll a lot through social media and even podcasting episodes, trying to find something that really sticks and resonates with us. So, And most of us don't comment or like or anything like that, but we still appreciate that. So I was really appreciative when Dave stopped paused, pressed like, and then made a comment on that. So thank you, Dave. It really did make my day when you commented on that post, but also on your, I guess, love for the Mindful Men podcast. Now, this next bit of feedback came from Ian Ferry on LinkedIn. So I do spend a fair bit of time on LinkedIn connecting in, and I love LinkedIn because it connects me with other allied health professionals as well, also people that can potentially refer me work. So it's a little bit different to my stuff on Facebook and Instagram, which is a bit more social, whereas I find LinkedIn is a lot more professionally focused. So if you're a professional out there and you're wondering how can you create networks, LinkedIn is fantastic. And I wish I'd been on LinkedIn much earlier because I really do enjoy and since I've started it and when I created the business as well. But Ian, yeah, he he commented on a, on a similar post to Dave as well. And he just said, Simon, you're a genuine bloke and 100% respect you for doing this. And PS, also loving the podcast. I love getting that feedback because me putting myself out there as a men's mental health advocate is something that lights me up. It's something that really gets me going. It has me jumping out of bed, say, at five o'clock in the morning to do a podcast with someone across the other side of the world. In fact, I do that quite regularly just to talk about men's mental health. And it's amazing when we do that, how much our stories align with people from other races and religions and cultures and, and all sorts, you know, sexualities. It's just such a universal topic that often gets disregarded. So I love working in this men's mental health space and the disability space as well. I'm really passionate about just supporting guys to just be the best versions of themselves. So to hear this feedback from a, a like-minded professional network from like Ian, it was just fantastic. So Ian, thanks so much for, for tuning in and loving the podcast, but also you know supporting me on my journey to advocate for better men's mental health. Now, the next one comes from YouTube. So yes, we're all over the place. You know, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, the podcast, emails, but YouTube is also where the Mindful Men podcast can be found. And if you're interested to join on, in on the YouTube discussion, it is free. I think people hear the word subscribe and they think they've got to pay. No, YouTube is for free. In fact, for what you're watching on in regards to TikTok in the news at the moment, with that potentially being banned in the US and then you know a few ripples being you know spoken here in Australia to do the same, I think YouTube might be, you know, the next play in that kind of short videos because it's long form content. So I do have full episodes in there. More recently, I've been doing shorter parts of the episode. So instead of doing the full video editing, which takes a long time to do, I've just been putting up 10 to 20 minute snips of, of each episode, the full audios on YouTube, but also every day I have shorts on there. So I have a short 30 second to one minute video that goes on the same of YouTube and TikTok of the conversations that I'm having through the Mindful Men podcast. So it is 
is another platform that you can engage with. I'd love for you to subscribe and start loving and commenting and sharing the videos that we put up there. But this one came through YouTube and it was from an episode I did a little while ago with Seamus Evans where we're talking about living with Tourette syndrome. And Seamus lives with Tourette syndrome. And so he's a great advocate and speaker for how Tourette syndrome impacts his daily life, but also impacts the lives of other people as well. And Erica came on and, and left a comment underneath this video recently. And I really loved that she did that because it shows us that the content we put out there, we might get some comments on that or likes or follows a bit down the track. And this episode has been out for a little while. So Erica said, Hi, my son was diagnosed with TS. He's 13 now and Eric is noticing more ticks and they're becoming more noticeable and louder. The kids haven't called him out yet, but I'm worried for him when the time comes. I'm doing more research to help him and protect his mental health. I don't think he's fully aware of his ticks and diagnosis. He's never mentioned it yet, but I know the time will come. So thank you for sharing this video. Again, like the, the, the reason that we do the podcast is to support people just like Erica to you know, learn a bit more about different topics. In this situation, it's around Tourette syndrome. We also talked about mental health in that episode as well and how we can actually turn maybe our pain into purpose. So Seamus does that in a really great way. And he's a keynote speaker. He, he goes to schools. He's a radio presenter. He was a TV personality. He does all these things to show people that you can still thrive even though you might have like a condition like Tourette syndrome or disability or mental health condition like I've got as well. So a lot of the time we we get hung up on the label and, and we feel like it drags us down, but we can also use it as fuel for our purpose. And in doing so, inspire people like Erica to, to learn about it and maybe use whatever we've got, a little snip in that video to support her son is just an amazing thing. So again, Erica, thank you. And if you're out there listening to this episode or another episode, feel free to comment on how it's helped you to develop or grow or, or learn something new because that then creates a little more ripple from the episode and then someone else might see that and go yes i've experienced similar or maybe have you tried this and we can start engaging as a community likewise within the mindful men facebook community if you're in there and you see a post comment on it or share or or share your insights into it because that really helps grow community exponentially but yeah again erica thanks so much for the feedback now this last one came from my episode where I guessed it on how I quit alcohol with Danny Carr. So I've already mentioned that in this episode, but I got this via email and Lachlan, who gave me this feedback, he's consented to me sharing what he wrote in this email. And it came at a time when I was spiraling a bit. I was really struggling. As I mentioned before, things like stress and anxiety with our move and I was right in the thick of it and I was really struggling. And this just lit me up for a whole week. I was bouncing around. In fact, every time I open up and I see Lachlan's email, I've got it saved in my computer, I just get this warm, fuzzy feeling that I am doing something good and I need to keep going. And I will keep going. I wasn't thinking about stopping, but sometimes life can get the better of us. Even though I'm a therapist, I do still struggle with my mental health and that's really important. I do have good days and I do have bad days. So Lachlan's email came at the perfect time because I needed to pick me up. And particularly around the social media content that I was doing and the podcast, I was wondering where the future directions will go, but this made me feel like I'm on the right track. So I'm going to share it with you. It is a little bit longer email, but I wanted to highlight it in its fullest or most of its fullest because I think it can resonate with so many of you out there as well. So it goes, hi, Simon. I'm currently listening to your latest episode, 115. So this was a little while ago, a few weeks ago. I felt compelled to send you a message. I've gone back through your catalog of episodes and I love your style. I'm a 44-year-old father of two in Melbourne, happily married, builder, kids are in high school. Thank you for creating this podcast. I discovered it from your interview with Danny Carr from How I Quit Alcohol. I'm a big fan of Danny and Ash's work and the How I Quit Alcohol podcast isn't always for me. It can actually feel very female focused, but some episodes have really struck a chord with me and yours was a ripper. I've saved your episode 96 on why you're going alcohol free for 2023. It really resonates with me. I was struggling with a bit of boredom last weekend and having a mild craving for the escape of alcohol. I listened to this episode again whilst doing a bit of housework and felt instantly calmer. Thank you. I've been alcohol free all this year. For the past five years, I've had periods of abstinence ranging from one to 10 weeks at a time. I always feel an epiphany after a few days of quitting, but after a few weeks, everything settles and it can be a risky time for me. 
If I allow myself to start, it quickly progresses to wanting to have quite a few drinks every night. I don't have social problems from drinking, but I do seek that feeling of oblivion which wrecks my sleep, then my mood, then I become an irritable and impatient parent. My goal is to go alcohol-free for 2024 and see what happens after that. I would say that for every negative alcohol-free moment, such as being offered a beer after work and thus feeling like I'm snubbing someone, there are 20 more positive moments in return. This email serves two purposes. One, to say thanks and to encourage you to keep up the good work. And two, a bit of mini journaling for myself. So don't feel obliged to reply. Just know that I'm a grateful listener. I've rated it five stars. If I have friends that need a boost or have a vulnerable conversation with me, I will suggest they listen too. I hope you get out the back this year, beyond the white water, and ride one into shore. Best wishes, Lachlan. (laughs) Just reading this now, like I'm getting a bit emotional. Like it just it fills me with so much joy. And and he he mentioned this one part, which I've never really thought of myself, but I think it reflects back to my recent craving for alcohol. I was sitting on the couch in this resort that we're living in, which is really fun, by the way. Like, it's not a bad place where I'm living, but it's not home. Like, it's, we're, we're in a bit of a hiatus from where home is. And I remembered this email, and that was one of the things that stopped me even thinking more about that craving. And so, even though my episode supported Lachlan to, to overcome his craving, I remembered his feedback, and that helped me to overcome my craving as well. And As I said before, it also picked me up in a period of time where I've been super stressed and anxious, not sure about myself in terms of the podcast or or content, where do I go with it? And Lachlan's email just made me feel like, yes, I'm on the right track. And it's interesting, I've spoken about a lot of content over the last two years on the podcast, but the alcohol story is one that is really resonating with other people. And it's one that I'm getting a lot more feedback on. So I'm interested to hear from you, more of you out there. How is alcohol impacting your life? What can we share about alcohol on the podcast that can help you continue your journey of sobriety or maybe step into sobriety as well? It's really important that we we think about these things when we engage with podcasts or self-help books or therapy. What's the impact on our lives when we're doing the same old, same old thing? And what can we do better or 1% different tomorrow or today that can break us out of that cycle that we're in to live a better life, a more mindful life, a happier and healthier life? So there's a bit of feedback from the community. I've really enjoyed um, reading it and receiving it from the different places that I've got it, LinkedIn, Insta, the email from other podcasters as well. So thank you so much for sharing it. If you're listening to this, again, thank you for being part of the Mindful Men community. I see you as part of the community. Even though I don't hear from you and we don't cross paths on the pavement as we walk past each other, I do feel like you're part of this community that is growing. And so there's a few things that you can do to help continue to grow. It's always give this this show a five-star rating. If you haven't given it a five-star rating, wherever you're listening, whether it's Spotify or, or Apple Podcasts, Podcast or another podcast platform, there is an ability to give a show a five-star rating. Please do that because what that does, it helps us climb the rankings ladders. When we do that, when people are looking for a podcast to look at, they see these ones that are getting good ratings and reviews and they're more likely to listen. So that's how we can grow it on the podcast platforms. I talked before about becoming a subscriber on YouTube. So come over there and, and join me on YouTube. It's the same content, but you get to see me in video as well. So it's not just the audio. If you loved an episode, take a screenshot and put it on your social media. Tag me in it as well because I'd love to see that and then share it with my community as well or our community, should I say. Share it with our community so they can see who's listening and who's getting value from it as well. I joined the free Mindful Men Facebook community. It is free. It's up and running. We've got a slow and steadily building base, which is fantastic. And as I said earlier, I've got ideas for an online connection like via Zoom, but also in person here on the Sunshine Coast. And eventually, globally let's get a global network of mindful men groups going that'll be awesome and last but least but is send me an email let me know what how you're thinking about the the show or what you're thinking about the show what you'd like what content you'd like to see or hear who you might want to hear from what guests that i can maybe you know, try and pitch to the email is hello at mindful-men.com.au or jump onto one of my social medias, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, send me a DM there. I'm always responding to those as well. But thank you so much for joining me on this amazing episode. A lot of feedback. It is a bit longer for my solo episodes, but I wanted to share that feedback with you. And until next time, stay mindful. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode and I hope you got some value from it. 
If anything triggered your mental health today, please reach out to your support networks. Also, if you loved what you heard, be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your mates. For more from Mindful Men, you can check us out on Instagram and YouTube, and I'll throw the links to these pages in the show notes below. But until next time, stay mindful.